All right, what's happening? Y'all, your Rico from Street Scores. As you can see, I am not home again. Again, like I said, by like next week, we're going to start coming with the super duper heavy draft content. We're going to be doing two, three videos a day. We're going to be doing film sessions and things like that. But even though I'm not home, I'm keeping y'all updated. So I felt like now was a good time that a few interesting things have stacked up. First of all, you have Adam Schefter doubling down on his Washington Commanders pick. You also have Jaden Daniels himself coming out and shutting down a really nasty rumor about him. Then also the J.J. McCarthy visit is officially confirmed, his top 30 visit. Then we have some top football decision makers and executives like the real, real football people that are breaking down a lot of the top quarterbacks. We have a lot of like scouts, NFL executives. We're even going to talk about what Jay Gruden and RG3 had to say about the top quarterbacks, even Donovan McNabb. We're going to bring in a lot of opinions from a lot of different places and more. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you go check out the playlist. I make sure I put all of these videos in very specific playlists. Make sure you go check those out. Make sure you also go follow me on all of the social medias, daily content over there, even a lot of things that I don't even necessarily have on my YouTube channel. So go follow the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the TikTok, everything, man. We are not playing with y'all. And again, buckle up because we're coming with heavy draft content very soon. Stay tuned for all of that. I'm going to keep y'all updated until I get back home as well, though, on a lot of different things. Without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get it. Adam. Adam. All right, so first of all, we saw Evan Silva come out and say in a mock draft that he did, and he literally picked Jaden Daniels to not go to the Commanders, to end up going to the Patriots, because he said, quote, Daniels is rumored to be intent on playing for New England after Daniels' meetings with Washington did not go smoothly. And so, of course, a lot of us panicked. We were like, wait, so Jaden Daniels already had his top 30 visit? And apparently it didn't go well, so now he doesn't want to play for us. Maybe we don't want him to play for us. We don't want to draft him. It was all kinds of chaos. And so that went un unchecked for like at least 24 hours. I mean, literally in his mock draft, he has us picking Drake May second overall. Then third, he has the Patriots picking Jaden Daniels. He said 2023's Heisman winner. Daniels led the nation in both yards per pass attempt and yards per rushing attempt. 31-year-old fifth team journeyman Jacoby Brissett would be New England's starter if the season began today but Daniels is rumored to be intent on playing for New England after Daniels's meetings with Washington didn't go as smoothly I don't know where he got this information from but this came out of nowhere and then there was a report that also said that the Raiders owner Mark Davis has given GM Tom Telesco and head coach Antonio Pierce who very well connected to Jaden Daniels from their time all the way back at Arizona State together. Permission to trade up in the NFL draft for a quarterback. Jaden Daniels could make sense if they're able to pull the trade off. And of course, that's where it seems like they're potentially leaning towards from all of the different reporting. And again, that strong connection they have going all the way back before Jaden Daniels even played for LSU. Back when Jaden Daniels was still with Brandon Ayuk over there at Arizona State with Antonio Pierce. But then Jaden Daniels had enough. He came out even himself and address this lion season type of stuff. Like it was so bad that even he had to come out to say something about it personally. Like he typically ignores like 99% of the rumors that are said out there about him and things like that. But even he had to address this one. Remember the elbow issue, he had to address that. And then he also came out and had to address this. And I almost feel sorry for him because people are just straight up lying on him. So when it came to the, somebody named Savage Sports on Twitter basically retweeted the whole situation about Jaden Daniels wants to play for New England after his meeting went wrong with the commanders. He literally just tweeted, very mature, very classy, literally just said, looking forward to my upcoming visits, glad to be home. Basically saying, I haven't had a visit with anybody yet. What are y'all talking about? How's my visit gone bad? I haven't even had a visit yet. And I just thought he went about that in a really funny 
mature way. He could have been way more upfront about it, way more direct. He just chose to go the super classy way. Just looking forward to my upcoming visits. That's all. I'm good. But I do want to point out that he only addressed that first rumor. He didn't say anything about the Raiders one at all. So that means that leaves that out in the open as far as the Raiders situation goes. A lot of people have been reporting that maybe he prefers to go to the Raiders. Maybe the Raiders prefer him and that's just a match made in heaven. He hasn't addressed that. So I'm not saying that he doesn't necessarily like not prefer to go to the Commanders or anything like that. But he made sure he addressed the elbow issue he made sure he addressed the he doesn't want to go to the commander's issue and that the fact that he had a bad meeting with us or anything like that but he's leaving that Raiders thing out in the air so who knows maybe he does prefer the Raiders and then also Ian Rappaport even came out and reported that the top 30 visits deadline is Wednesday April 17th and then first of all that's important and then even on top of that he announced that Jaden Daniels is going to Ashburn for his top 30 visit on Tuesday April 16th and that's big news because we already knew that he was officially coming in for a top 30 visit from trustworthy sources just in general but now we have like an official date we know exactly when he's going to be in Ashburn for that visit and apparently he's flying in Monday to have his visit Tuesday which makes me question maybe it's absolutely nothing maybe that's just to make sure that he's ready very early for his actual visit maybe he's flying in the day before just because of that but also what what, could, what else could he be doing on wednesday is he getting a tour of dc you know maybe potentially getting a good feel for the place that he's potentially going to get drafted to maybe somebody's showing him around telling them that the museums and the zoos are free there and all of that type of stuff where to eat at all the nice spots i mean i'm joking around but I'm still trying to figure out why he's flying in like that much earlier, but you never know. It could just be he wants to be there in time so that the next morning they can immediately start on the visit with no time being wasted on travel. And then after telling us all of that, Ian Rappaport also dropped another bomb in this like one minute and 12 second clip. Not only did he tell us when, when it comes to Drake May, but then he also confirmed that Drake May is coming in for a visit at all. Like, we had never had confirmation that Drake May was coming in for a visit. We assumed he was. I said it in multiple videos. The only ones that we know for sure are Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix as of, like, the past week. And I was like, I'm pretty sure Drake May is going to come in for a visit, but we don't know that for 100% sure. And, of course, we also didn't know when because we didn't know if he was at all. But... Again, it was always weird to me that we had early confirmation on Michael Pittix and Jaden Daniels for since like over a week ago, but we didn't have any confirmation on Drake May. But not only do we know that he is coming in for a visit in Drake May's case, but now we also know when, and he's coming in for a visit Wednesday, and yes, that's the deadline. That's literally the le very last day that we can have top 30 visits with any draft prospects, not even just the quarterback specifically. So that is a little weird, but maybe it means nothing. Maybe Drake may just so happen to be super busy until Wednesday or something. Maybe we prioritize Jaden Daniels over Drake. Who knows, man? I just think it is pretty odd that he's coming in like the very last day possible. It could be something. It could be absolutely nothing. Who knows? But just like Jaden Daniels, Drake May is flying in the day before. So I'm assuming that's just protocol. Maybe again, you want to get a very early start to your top 30 visit very early in the morning, the day of your visit, and you don't want to waste time traveling. Or maybe, like I said with Jaden, maybe he's getting, sh Drake May's getting shown around DC the day before his meeting. You know, being taken to all the five spots and everything like that, trying to fall in love with his future potential city that he's going to be the face of the franchise for, all of that type of stuff. You just never know, man. Maybe it's a mix of both. Maybe it's something and nothing in certain ways. And then it's also being reported by other sources that J.J. McCarthy is officially confirmed to be coming in for a visit before the deadline. Now, Drake May is Wednesday. J.J. Daniels is the day before that, Tuesday, so maybe... We don't know the day for J.J. McCarthy yet, but maybe I'm assuming it's like Monday, Sunday, Saturday, whatever. Today's Thursday, so it's going to be sometime in between tomorrow as in Friday and Monday It had for his visit to be coming in. Um, so we don't know when his will be. We also still don't know when J Michael Penix's is or was. Maybe his already happened. Maybe it's happening soon. But again, we've seen confirmed by multiple trustworthy sources that J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix Jr. are also getting visits. We've seen nothing about Bo Nix. We've seen nothing about Spencer Rattler or any of these other top potential quarterbacks that other people like as well. Just Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, dates pending, we don't know. And then Jaden Daniels Tuesday, Drake May Wednesday. That's it. But it's crazy because the draft and when you really think about it, it's only less than two weeks away. And even before that, as of April 16th, 
they will probably already know exactly what they want to do with that second overall pick. So just think about it. In less than a week, the commanders will probably have their minds already made up for what they're going to do with the number two overall pick, which quarterback they're going to take or whatever. And then a week after that, we will actually see what they decided to do with the pick. So we're almost there, y'all. Buckle up. We are very close, man. That's why I got to go ahead and get a lot of these film sessions done. Now, of course, after we already draft our guys with the picks that we have, I'm going to do film sessions on those guys as well. But I definitely want to do some pre-draft film sessions as well. So stay tuned for that very soon. And then the Raiders are, aren't the only team that seem interested in potentially trading up for Jaden Daniels because now Ian Rappaport has reported literally earlier today, not as of at 9 a.m., he tweeted more on Jaden Daniels. As the intrigue picks up, the Vikings have now scheduled a private meeting with the LSU star and Heisman Trophy winner per Agent Butler 1. So it's not just the Raiders. It's the Vikings as well. And of course, it's us, the Commanders. You just never know, man. So, shouts out to Ben Standig for putting this together. Now, Jaden Daniels has top 30 visits with, that we know of with the Commanders who have the second overall pick, the Patriots who have the third overall pick, the Giants who have the sixth overall pick. And then it's being reported today that the Vikings with the sixth overall pick will have a private workout, even though it's technically not a top 30 visit. I don't know. And then, after Minnesota... Basically, the road ends for Jaden Daniels. That may be where he wraps it up. But of course, that's subject to change. You just never know. But as of right now, that's what it seems like. Commanders, Patriots, Giants, Vikings. And then, of course, there hasn't been any like confirmed visits with the Raiders. But there seems to be strong interest mutually there. So those are like the really like five, six teams that really matter in the Jaden Daniels sweepstakes. But at the end of the day, if we want them second overall, there's nothing any other team can do. And then Adam Schefter, moving on, also doubled down on his Jaden Daniels to Commander's prediction. Remember, just like last week, he said literally signs of pointing towards Jaden Daniels going to Washington. He highly doubts that Jaden Daniels will make it past Washington second overall. He literally said, just like how you can pencil in Caleb Williams number one overall, you can also pencil in Jaden Daniels number two overall to the Washington Commanders. And so then now he's doubling down on that opinion. And as of yesterday, he said, quote, I will stand behind that. The signs still continue to point to Jaden Daniels going number two to Washington. And again, I've already done like a full video breakdown on how after the whole Ben Johnson and Dan Quinn situation where everybody, well, not everybody, well, most people assumed that it was going to be Ben Johnson to Washington, Dan Quinn to Seattle. He was the, the like main person out in front basically saying, hey, don't believe that hype. That's more than likely how it's not going to go down. And then he ended up being right. Everybody, a lot of people were doubting him when he said it. And then he ended up being super right about it. So now I'm just looking at Adam Schefter like maybe he, maybe he's not just this super all seeing oracle prophet type of guy, but maybe he just knows something behind the scenes that maybe nobody else has access to certain levels of information, certain levels of clearance and trustworthy sources and things like that. So maybe he knows something that the rest of us don't. And maybe it really is Jaden Daniels to Washington. Who knows? I don't want to believe in, in it too much, but I'm just going to keep giving you all the information that I have. All of these rumors, all of these reports, I'm not saying that they necessarily matter, but my whole purpose of making these videos is just so that you are kept up on everything that's going on, especially with this quarterback situation with the number two overall pick. And then I'm also working on another video to update y'all on a few other position groups that we're, we're rumored to be interested in. We're bringing in more guys for Top 30 Business and things like that. So be on the lookout for that video probably tomorrow. I'm keeping y'all updated on everything, but I just feel like quarterback is always priority. And again, I'm not trying to influence anybody's opinions on a lot of these things. I'm just giving you the information that I see mostly on Twitter, but also different articles, different places like the 33rd team, ESPN, the Athletic Bleacher Report, everywhere that I can find any information, I'm trying to provide that to y'all. So y'all just know everything that's going on and then also Jaden Daniels's agent liked the post about Adam Schefter doubling down now that could also be something but that could also be nothing who knows but I do want to point out the fact that that whole thing that we were just talking about with Adam Schefter basically coming out and saying on his podcast I'm doubling down it's Jaden Daniels to Washington even a week later I'm still just as sure about it as I was just a week ago Jaden Daniels' agent himself went to Twitter to like somebody that posted that, that quote of Adam Schefter saying that, just to give you that information as well. And then moving on, there's also this continuing trend that people who clearly prefer Drake May themselves and feel like he's the better quarterback are still continuing to predict that the Washington Commanders will take Jaden Daniels. 
you had the people at the Ringer NFL um, podcast, the NFL Draft podcast over there. You have Trevor Sikama and Connor Rogers over there with their podcast, the NFL Stock Exchange. All of these guys prefer Drake May, and if they were the Washington Commanders, they would take Drake May. And all of them are also predicting Jaden Daniels to go to the Washington Commanders. And continuing that trend, now you also have Max Chadwick College Football when talking about Drake May versus Jaden Daniels. He said, quote, I personally think is." not even really close. I think Drake May is quarterback two in this draft. But as of right now, I think Jaden Daniels ultimately will be the number two pick to go to the Washington Commanders. So even somebody that feels like it's a big gap is Caleb Williams, Drake May in their own tier, big gap, then Jaden Daniels. He still even feels like Jaden Daniels is going to the Washington Commanders. And those are the, the viewpoints that really have me thinking that maybe it is Jaden Daniels to Washington because it'd be different if it were Jaden Daniels fans picking Jaden Daniels to Washington second overall. But you have people that like Drake May way more than Jaden Daniels, and even they feel like Jaden Daniels is destined to be the pick for us. So those are the opinions that I'm definitely looking like, okay, maybe we're on to something here. Who knows? And then you also have some NFL executives who have some really interesting opinions on these top quarterbacks. And we're talking about the big dogs, like the real football people, the executives, the scouts, the real football decision makers. These aren't just random analysts. These aren't draft analysts. These aren't reporters. These aren't beat writers. These are the people that are really in the organization, GMs, the, the, the scouts, all of those type of guys. And there were a lot of quotes as well, so we're just going to stick with Jaden Daniels and Drake May because we would be here all day if we talked about every quarterback that they talked about. It's a lot of quotes. And of course, also shouts out to Ben Standig for putting this together through The Athletic. This is his article that we're going to be reading from. So again, there's so many quotes on each quarterback that we're just only going to cover Jaden Daniels and Drake May, even though maybe another video we can dive into the other ones like J.J. McCarthy. They talked about Michael Penix. They talked about Mo Nix. And of course, we can even maybe, maybe even dive into Caleb Williams if we want to. But Jaden Daniels wise, the article says only Williams and Daniels, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, received first place votes. Oh yeah, so let's start with that. There's also a situation where the NFL executives rank their draft top quarterbacks and things like that. And so they basically use like a point system. It's a 5-3-2-1 scoring system with first place votes in parentheses, basically. And so they have two active general managers three personnel executives, three scouts, one assistant quarterbacks coach, three former general managers, one ex-head coach, and four former players turned analysts, including two ex-quarterbacks, doing this ranking system, doing this point system. And through their point system, Caleb Williams has the most points with 78 points with 14 first place votes. Then you have Jaden Daniels. He has 50 total points with three first place votes. Out of those list of people that, again, are as plugged in as you could possibly be into the NFL, again, Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams are the only ones to receive any first place votes. Drake May, nor Michael Penix, nor J.J. McCarthy, nor Bo Nix received any first place votes. And again, Jaden Daniels is not only the only one outside of Caleb Williams that received first place votes with only three. Jaden Daniels also has the second most points with 50. Drake May is third with 24 points. Then just, you know, to compare it, J.J. McCarthy's right behind them with 23. Again, Jaden Daniels, 50 points. Drake May, 24. J.J. McCarthy, 23. Michael Penix has eight. And Bo Nix only has three. Bo Nix has as many total points as, as Jaden Daniels has first place votes alone. That's crazy. Now, let's continue. Only Williams and Jaden Daniels, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, received first place votes. Daniels' experience, 53, starts with Arizona State and LSU. Development as a passer and a dual threat playmaking had several sources speaking in glowing terms his frame thin frame six foot four 210 pounds and penchant for playing in traffic led to wicked collisions and long-term threats with panelists however his improvement and apparent fit with offensive coordinator cliff kingsbury's up tempo offense have made him a mock draft staple at number two overall to washington and they will also host him starting monday for a visit and then there's also this stat about percentage on third down pass attempts that resulted in the first down. And Jaden Daniels had the most with 48.21%. JJ McCarthy was second, Bo Nix was third, then it was Caleb Williams, then it was Drake May, then it was Michael Penix. So technically, Jaden Daniels is the best third down quarterback in this draft class, on top of also being the best deep ball threat, also being the most mobile, all of that type of stuff. 
So then you have the assistant coach. He said Daniels is so good. He is so much better than May and McCarthy. It's not even close. Daniels can play NFL football right now. Scout number two, Jaden's probably made more progress than any quarterback coming out of the last five or six years. He can anticipate, make all of the throws, and is an explosive athlete and scrambler, as a scrambler. He's not Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick, and I agree with that. His ability to process pre-snap has improved as a passer, which is hard to do in the in just one year. We know he started working with the virtual realities headset that I did a whole video on like weeks ago. Make sure you go check that out if you want to, a full breakdown on what virtual reality thing he was doing in between games during the week and outside of film, outside of just the normal hours you need to put in the film session. He was taking time out of his day and weeks and months to just do this virtual reality thing. He got those VR reps and that's when he took off. So a lot of people feel like the VR situation is what led to him becoming so great. And I talked about in that video, Josh Harris, go get that VR headset. Even if we don't take Jaden, even if we take Drake, May, you bring that VR headset in because the way that Drayden Daniels just got so much better mentally, IQ, awareness, scanning the field wise, I just don't see how you don't go and bring that VR headset in. It's clearly proof of product there. Then scout number one, high upside, but has a ton of room to grow. It will take a couple of years and the offense has been tailored to him. It's gonna be some wild, but some ugly plays a lot like Justin Fields. That's interesting there. That's a very different opinion from what most people are saying about him. Former head coach, Jaden straight up is quarterback too. He can start immediately, but he better learn to protect himself or he'll be in the hot, cold tub often. And then personal executive number one, he can end up being the best one, good athlete and arm talent. I think he sees it and can process big drop off after him and Williams. So several of those people are basically saying it's Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels and a tier of their own, big gap, everybody else. And that's including Drake May down there at the bottom for some of those guys. Now, when you talk about Drake May, they said if these six passers were ranked on the level of polarization, May would be the runaway leader. Following the 2022 season, Circle saw him as Williams' rival for quarterback one draft status due to his prototype 6'4", 223 pound size, deep passing strength, mobility, and competitiveness. As a first time starter, May was named ACC Player of the Year. And we just go on and on about his his background information and things like that. And then they also provided a clip of him making a great clutch play on fourth down against Duke. Now let's get to the actual opinions on him. Our current GM, people are going to pick May apart. If he ends up being the best of the group, it won't shock me. He is made of the right stuff. Then you have Sims. If you watch 20 throws, you'll see good throws. Then the ball is all over the place. The decision making can be all over the place. The pocket presence is all over the place, let alone some mechanical flaws and how he throws the football. It was confirmed to me in his pro day, which was underwhelming. He got all the size. He's pretty athletic when he runs. I also always hear May is like Justin Herbert coming out of Josh Allen and my brain wants to explode. So Sims hates the Justin Herbert and Josh Allen comparisons. He has them ranked lower than both of those guys coming out of the draft. Scout number one literally said, Nay reminds me a lot of Herbert, completely different, which is why when Ben Standig said that Drake May is the most polarizing quarterback in this draft class, there you go. Back to back opinions, completely opposite right there. Then the, one of the assistant coaches said, May is Herbert light. Take everything Herbert does and make it less. They'll be compared because of the prototype size, but there's no comparison. I like May, but when I see the amount of work it will take to have him reach his potential, we'll be fired first. That is an interesting quote right there. Basically, he's saying that, yeah, May has a high ceiling, but we may not even be coaching for this team by the time he reaches that ceiling. Us picking him top three in the draft, if I had that pick, by the time he actually reaches his ceiling, I'm probably up out of the door because it's taking them so long to be developed. And then, so that's really interesting as well. That's a viewpoint that a lot of people have on Drake May that he's so raw that he may need at least a year to sit and things like that, which is not usually a person you spend a top three pick on, especially number two overall. Then personnel executive number one, he straight up said, he scares the hell out of me. Longer thrower with a big arm, but not quick release. Nothing feels like it happens in rhythm and accuracy is average. Needs a year on the bench. And then a former GM said, he has accuracy you, you can't teach and is only scratching the surface with his upside while he physically matures. Wait for years two and three. If he progresses, he can end up like Troy Aikman. 
these varying opinions are all over the place. And again, we're just stopping at Jaden Daniels and Drake May. Again, check out Ben Standig's article with Athletic. Maybe we can read about the other quarterbacks in another video, but I just mostly want to talk about Jaden Daniels and Drake May for this video. And then I'm moving on. I'm very sure y'all don't care about these opinions, but both Jay Gruden and RG3 both feel like Jaden Daniels should be the pick. And I'm pretty sure that some of y'all who even prefer Jaden Daniels may even prefer Drake May because of those two guys' opinions right there. Like, there's no way I can agree on anything those two agree on. And I understand, man. I completely understand. But with Jay Gruden's opinion, because RG3 was just more straight up. He's the better quarterback. Take him. Jay Gruden's opinion was interesting, though. His exact quote was that Jaden Daniels is basically Josh Johnson with better accuracy and with arm talent similar to Teddy Bridgewater. He also believes that UNC quarterback Drake May might be the better long-term option. However, Daniels could play right away. So take his Jaden Daniels pick for Washington with a grain of salt because like, does he even really like him? How are you gonna say the commanders should draft him and then also say that his comp is Josh Johnson with a questionable arm like Teddy Bridgewater? Like what? Like, So first of all, I don't see that on tape at all. I don't agree. But even if I did, I wouldn't want that for a second overall pick. So maybe Jay Gruden still hates us. Maybe he still has it out for us. Maybe he prefers Drake May, but wants Washington to take the lesser of the two quarterbacks just because he hates us. I don't know. And then I know y'all super duper probably don't care about this opinion here, but Donovan McNabb was with Zach Gill and he said that Michael Penix has been highly disrespected and he's the best pocket passing quarterback in this draft class and it's actually kind of hard to argue against that I'm not gonna lie but I just wanted to include that in there as well go ahead and throw that in there and also Matt Miller has some interesting things to say about the whole situation as well he said what we're hearing about the commander's draft quote yeah it's widely accepted at this point that the commanders will draft the quarterback at number two overall the question is which one when I asked a dozen NFL scouts and executives about the selection I kept hearing that Daniels is the most likely pick that intel, of course, is from people outside the commander's organization. So take it with a grain of salt, but it sounds like many people around the league believe the reigning Heisman Trophy winner will follow Williams off the board to go second overall to the Washington Commanders. And then also, Chris Cooley brings up a great point before we get up out of here. He said half of the fan base, he was quoting it, somebody was saying this on Twitter, I guess, half of the fan base won't support the quarterback Peters drafts because it's not the QB they wanted. And he's basically laughing at that saying, he said exactly on Twitter, you mean the same fan base that talked themselves into Ryan Fitzpatrick and Carson Wentz? Yeah, okay. And I think that's a great point. I know a lot of people are very passionate about this quarterback debate and this whole civil war we have going on right now. But at the end of the day, people are acting like as of today, that if we don't take the quarterback they want specifically, they're just gonna give up on the team. But I'm pretty sure this fan base, no matter who we gonna we end up taking, is gonna rally behind the guy. Cause again, we found a way to rally behind Ryan Fitzpatrick or Carson Wentz. And there's no way y'all prefer those two quarterbacks over Drake May or Jaden Daniels, no matter how much you may not like one of the other ones. I don't care if you're a Jaden Daniels fan, there's no way you prefer Ryan Fitzpatrick and Carson Wentz over Drake May and vice versa. It's just no way, especially knowing what we know now. Of course, hindsight is 2020, but man, there's just no way. So he's basically saying that no matter who we end up taking, this fan base is going to end up finding a way to rally behind that guy and at worst, at least convince themselves that it was the better pick, no matter who they prefer pre-draft. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release informative and opinion video just like this one. And I really appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Again, as we get like maybe a little over a week away from the draft, that's, that's April 25th. Make sure you stay tuned because at that point, like when we're in that crunch time, like like seven to eight days before the draft, I'm coming to y'all with like two, three videos a day. We're doing film sessions for a lot of the draft prospects that I'm very interested in. Even in a lot of guys that I, I don't even feel like the commanders have a chance of getting, I just may have a point to prove, like Amarius Mims. I'm not very confident in the fact that the commanders are gonna get him, but I feel like a lot of people are really hating on, disrespecting and sleeping on my dog, Amarius Mims, and the fact that he literally has the highest ceiling of any tackle in this draft class. I'm gonna do a film session literally explaining why. So I have maybe some like agenda-based 
um, film sessions that I may do before the draft. And then, of course, after the draft, I will be doing film sessions on every player we bring in and maybe even some undrafted free agents if we have the time. And, of course, make sure you pull up for the draft as well. You know I'm live streaming rounds one through five. So day one, April 25th, live streaming that whole first round. And you know me, man. I'm super draft GM guy. So even though I'm a Commanders fan, we're going to be breaking down every pick. We're going to try to guess every pick before it happens. We're going to talk about potential draft trades and things when they're going down. But like I'm watching these guys go from high school recruiting, even some guys since middle school, because I'm a big Georgia Bulldog fan. Recruiting starts in middle school. So I'm watching these guys go from middle school, high school, college to the NFL. So there's some people that may that have even gone to the Georgia Bulldogs that may not even go to the commanders that I've just kept track of because I really wanted my Georgia Bulldogs to get them and now I want my commanders to get them. So I'm going to be analyzing a lot of picks and I'm going to be very familiar with players that even we're not even the, in the realm of getting just because I've been keeping track of these guys since at, at worst high school. So I'm breaking down every pick in the first round. We'll be doing the same thing with the second and third rounds for every team, not just the commanders. So make sure you pull up. I'm doing day one, round one, day two, rounds two and three, and then day three, rounds four and five at the very least. But if the draft is interesting enough, I may keep live streaming even longer than that going into round six and seven. And of course, I'll keep it all updated. I'm going to do full breakdowns, weaknesses, strims, comps, and everything and scheme fit for every player that we draft as well even outside of the film sessions the film sessions are one thing but then like the live reaction breakdowns of we just got this guy what are his weaknesses strengths what is what is his comp how does he fit this team is he a high floor high ceiling guy low floor low whatever so make sure you stay tuned for all of that i know i'm going on a super rant at the end of the video so i just wanted y'all to be aware of all of the crazy content i'm coming to y'all with as of like next week i'm about to start coming two three videos a day so stay tuned for that of course don't leave this video without leaving a like and of course get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video let me know your opinions on the Jaden daniels drake may everything chaos going on right now the top 30 visits all of that and how top execs and scouts feel about those guys. Do you agree with them? All of that type of stuff. So stay tuned. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.